Thailand reports suspected first MPOX case. Israeli military kills senior Palestinian fighter in Lebanon. Good afternoon and Salam Lisa Madani, I'm Sahih Samsudin and you're watching World Today. Thailand has reported a suspected first case of the new more dangerous strain of MPOX, which the World Health Organization has declared a global public health emergency. According to the Kingdom's Department of Disease Control, the patient landed in Bangkok on 14 August and was sent to hospital with MPOX symptoms the following morning. Laboratory tests are underway to confirm the strain, but officials believe it to be from Clade 1 variant. The infected person, a 66-year-old European who travelled to Thailand from an African country, has been quarantined. Health officials are also monitoring 42 people who came into close contact with the patient. While MPOX has been known for decades, a new, more deadly and more transmissible strain known as Clade 1B has driven the recent surge in cases. The International Organization for Migration has launched an appeal for $18.5 million to provide crucial healthcare services to migrants. Internally displaced persons and host communities in East Africa, Southern Africa and the Horn of Africa at risk of MPOX. The United Nations agency said it is concerned about migrants, internally displaced persons and highly mobile populations in the region who tend to be at far greater risk of infection due to their living conditions and mobile and transitory lifestyles that greatly limit their access to health and medical care. The organisation said its appeal, preparedness and response plan is designed to reduce the risk of exposure to the disease for these vulnerable groups. It explained that the required $18.5 million will be used to enhance the capacity to respond to the needs of migrants, internally displaced persons and host communities by supporting prevention and control measures, particularly at borders. The UN Migration Agency also said the funding would further build the capacity of national healthcare workers and frontline responders and enable the identification of high-risk areas to ensure effective monitoring of the disease and reduce its spread across borders. The Israeli military killed a senior Palestinian fighter in Lebanon, leading to accusations from the Fatah group that Israel was trying to ignite a regional war. The strike that killed Khalil Magda, described by Fatah as one of the leaders of its armed wing in Lebanon, came hours after U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken ended a tour of West Asia aimed at reaching a ceasefire in the Israel-Hamas war in Gaza. Fatah, which is based in the West Bank and rivals the Gaza Strip's Hamas group, said Magda was killed near the southern Lebanese city of Sidon. His killing marked the first time Israel has targeted a senior Fatah member in more than 10 months of cross-border clashes with Lebanese armed fighters, mostly from Hezbollah during the Gaza war. Taufik Tirawi, a member of Fatah's Central Committee, said that the assassination is further proof that Israel wants to ignite a full-scale war in the region. At least three people were killed in the latest Israeli strike on a school-turned-shelter. Gaza Civil Defense Agency said the bodies were pulled from the rubble and 15 wounded, including 10 children, were taken to hospital after the Israeli bombing of the Salah al-Din school in Gaza City. Head of the UN Agency for Palestinian Refugees, Filippi Larzani, denounced yesterday's strike, saying that some were burned to death in the horrific attack on one of the agency's schools in Gaza City. The United Nations said Israel has struck at least 23 schools sheltering displaced people in Gaza since the 4th of July. While the Israeli military accuses Hamas of using the school as basis for attacks or command posts, which the Palestinian group denies. Tens of thousands of displaced people have taken refuge in schools since the Israel-Hamas war broke out on 7 October. 
Meanwhile, Palestinians fled the western area of Khan Yunis in the southern Gaza Strip after an Israeli evacuation order, moving towards the central part of the city. One man said he had been displaced for 20 times and that houses and tents had been struck. Another said that areas such as Al Mawasi, which have been deemed safe zone by the Israeli military, are unsafe, leaving the displaced with nowhere to go. Israel's military offensive against Hamas has killed at least 40,223 people in Gaza, most of them women and children. There will be no second mission to bring more injured Palestinians to Malaysia. According to Defence Minister Dr. Sri Mohamed Khalid Nordin, the country is providing as much assistance as possible to its best of its capability. Coming up next, Ukrainian parliament agrees to join ICC. Donald Trump held his first outdoor campaign event since an assassination attempt lobbing insults at his surging Democratic opponent Kamala Harris from behind bulletproof glass at a rally in the battleground state of North Carolina. Trump speaking against a backdrop of vintage warplanes at an aviation museum called Harris the most radical left person ever to run for the White House and claimed that millions of jobs will vanish overnight if she wins in November. With Harris drawing enthusiastic crowds since replacing Joe Biden at the top of the Democratic ticket, the event in Asheboro was a chance for Trump to reclaim his long-time dominance in staging spectacular rallies. It was his first big outdoor event since being lightly wounded in an attempted assassination at a similarly open site in Butler, Pennsylvania a month ago. The attack left one rally participant dead before the 20-year-old gunman was killed by a Secret Service sniper. Crowds are an integral part of Trump's political brand, with the right-wing billionaire seeking to portray himself as an outsider and man of the people. Even as president, he kept up a steady schedule of election-style rallies, often filling sports arenas with at least 10,000 people. Ukraine's parliament has voted to join the International Criminal Court, ICC, as Kiev seeks to bring Russia to justice over war crimes it is alleged to have committed throughout its invasion. The International Criminal Court prosecutes grave offences such as genocide and crimes against humanity and has the power to issue arrest warrants that its 124 members are obliged to execute. Ukraine signed the Rome Statute that founded the court in 2000 but had not ratified it as some political and military figures expressed fears Ukrainian soldiers could face prosecution. Ukraine's Foreign Minister Dmitry Kuleba called the move historic after the parliament adopted the ratification of the statute. Ruling party lawmaker Yevgenia Kravchuk said the ratification controversially included a reference to Article 124 of the Rome Statute, which would exempt Ukrainian citizens from being prosecuted for war crimes for seven years. She said the ratification of the Rome Statute will simultaneously facilitate greater opportunities for punishing Russians and increase the isolation of Russia. Kiev has long faced pressure from rights groups to ratify the treaty as well as from the European Union, which Ukraine has sought to join. Ukrainian civilians have fled areas close to the front line as Russian troops steadily seize more territory across the eastern Donetsk region. The Russian army has captured several towns and villages in recent days, even as Moscow scrambles to fight off a Ukrainian counterattack into its western Kurs region. Civilians in Mirnograd, less than 10 kilometers from the front line, said that increased shelling had finally prompted some to leave two and a half years after Russia launched its invasion. Russian troops are fighting to reach the key logistics hub of Pokrovos, a strategically important city five kilometers west of Minograd. 
Officials had ordered families with children to evacuate Provacross and the surrounding areas where they said more than 50,000 people still live. Russia, meanwhile, claimed its latest territorial advance with the Defence Ministry saying its forces had captured the town of Zelen, around 20 kilometres to the southeast. Moscow claimed to have annexed the industrial Donetsk region as well as three others in eastern and southern Ukraine despite not having full control over any of them. The Donetsk region has been at the centre of the war between Russia and Ukraine since 2014 when Moscow-backed separatists tried to seize control of Donbass region and secede from Kiev. German Chancellor Olaf Scholz said on Wednesday Ukraine had not consulted Berlin about its shock incursion into Russia and that he expected that military operation to be limited in time and territory. Speaking at a press conference after talks with Moldovan President Maya Sandu in Chisinau, Scholz said Berlin was monitoring further developments around the incursion closely. Ukrainian leaders have cast the attacks as proof that their military can still succeed in offensive operations and still surprise. Russia has vowed to repel the incursion, separately Scholl said. Germany would continue to be what he said was Ukraine's biggest supporter in Europe after controversy in recent days over what some have called wavering German support for Kiev over domestic politicking. Moldovan President Maya Sandu said that Berlin's support for her country strengthened neighbouring Ukraine and security in the region. Iran's conservative-dominated parliament has approved reformist president Masoud Pejeshkian's proposed cabinet, which includes one woman and a foreign minister open to dialogue with the West. Lawmakers voted in favour of all 19 ministers chosen by Pejeshkian, who was inaugurated in July after his predecessor Ibrahim Raisi died in a helicopter crash during a session broadcast on state television. Yesterday's vote was the first time in 23 years that Iran's parliament granted confidence to all ministers proposed by a president since the term of reformist Mohammad Khatami. The new cabinet includes Abbas Aragici, a 61-year-old career diplomat, as Iran's new foreign minister, replacing Hussein Amir Abdullayan, who died along with Raisi in May. Argichi, known for his openness towards the West, has recently vowed all-round support for the axis of resistance and Palestine during a speech in Parliament, referencing pro-Tehran armed groups opposed to Israel. Yesterday's vote also approved the only woman in the cabinet, Farzane Sogdeh, second woman to hold a ministerial post since the Islamic Republic's establishment in 1979. Sogdeh, aged 47, will head the Ministry of Roads and Urban Development. A bus carrying Pakistanis overturned in central Iran, killing at least 28 passengers and injuring another 23 people. The crisis management director general of Yaz province said the deceased include 11 women and 17 men, while seven of the injured people were in critical condition. According to a preliminary investigation made by the Iranian traffic police, the accident took place late on Tuesday in the central Iranian province of Yaz and was caused by a technical defect in the bus braking system. The injured, most of them coming from Lakana, Ghotki and other cities in Pakistan's southern Sin province, were taken to local hospitals. Pakistan's consular services in Iran had been invited to Yaz province to follow up on the accident. Foreign Ministry spokesperson Nasir Kanani said Iran expressed its sincere sympathy to the neighbouring and brotherly government of Pakistan as well as the bereaved families, adding that relevant authorities in Iran are actively pursuing relief and treatment services. Extensive flooding in eastern Bangladesh has left more than 200,000 people stranded. Chief of the Fani District Administration, Shaheen Akhtar, said that three sub-districts, Pulgazi, Chagal Naya and Porsuram, were particularly hard hit by the rain-triggered floods. Akhtar said heavy rain for nearly a week and the onrush of water from upstream hilly areas caused local rivers to burst their banks. She added that the army troops, along with local volunteers, had started evacuating the flood-affected people to safety. She also noted that no person has yet been reported as dead or missing. A local resident in Pulgazi, Motahar Hossein, said many thatched homes and croplands were flooded. 
He said people in the remote areas were using boat as a means of transportation as most of the roads were underwater, adding that in some low-laying areas of the water reach up to the roof of the houses. The local weather office reported 183 millimetres of rainfall in Fanny District through yesterday morning and more rain was in forecast through Friday. At least three employees were shot dead at a high school in northwest Bosnia by a co-worker who then tried to kill himself. The shooting occurred in Sanski Mos as teachers met to prepare for the upcoming school year. There were no students present at the time. The violence come after high-profile mass shootings in other Balkan nations in recent years, including back-to-back -back attacks that rocked Serbia last year. Police spokesman Adnan Bignovic said the man used a military firearm and automatic rifle to kill three school employees before trying to kill himself. Bagnovic further explained that the victims comprised the principal, a secretary and an English teacher. The assailant was seriously wounded and transferred to a hospital in Banjaluka in the north. Police did not provide a motive for the attack, with the media saying that the man was a janitor facing disciplinary proceedings. Mass demonstrations erupted in Serbia last year after 19 people were killed in less than 48 hours, including 10 at an elementary school in Belgrade. The shooting sparked anti-government protests as tens of thousands called for the resignation of top officials and an end to the glorification of violence and gangster culture in the media. Divers searching for six people missing after a super yacht sank off Sicily, including UK tech tycoon Mike Lynch, pulled four bodies from the wreck and reportedly found a fifth. The grim development after three days of searches since the boat went down early on Monday morning bring the death toll to six with one person still missing. There was no official identification of the bodies, but Lynch and his 18-year-old daughter Hannah are among those missing since the yacht was scuppered in a storm off the Italian island. The 56-metre British flag sailing boat had been anchored some 700 metres off Porticello, east of Palermo, when it was struck by a water spout akin to a mini tornado. It sank within minutes, the speed with which the yacht sank and the fact that other boats around it were unaffected was extraordinary. Fifteen people were rescued including Lynn's wife and a woman with a one-year-old baby. But the body of a man believed to be yacht chef was found several hours later. The Coast Guard said the death of the yacht, which is largely intact and resting on the seabed some 50 metres down, had been a challenge for the search and rescue operation. Italian authorities have opened an investigation into the incident and are interviewing all the survivors, including Captain James Cutfield, a 51-year-old New Zealander. Still to come in sports, Gallagher leaves Chelsea for Atletico Madrid. Nauman Harimau Selatan, Ambukan, Gergasi Merah, Aksi Penentuan Yang Tertangguh, Bakal Disudahkan, Membakar Semangat Juang, Dua Pasukan, Bagi Menakluki Takta Buruan Yang Lebih Ulung, Perlawanan Akhir Piala FA 2024, Sabtu 24 Ogos, Jomo Darun Taksim Bertemu Selangor FC, 8.30 minit malam di saluran sukan RTM, saksikan juga secara penswema langsung di RTM Click. Atletico Madrid has signed England midfielder Conor Gallagher from Chelsea on a five-year deal. Gallagher, who had been at Chelsea since the age of eight, has signed a contract until the year 2029 with Atletico, who have paid 42 million euros for the 24-year-old. Gallagher spent the early part of his senior career on loan, including spells at Premier League clubs West Bromwich Albion and Crystal Palace, and did not make his Chelsea debut until 2022. Last season, Gallagher started 37 Premier League games, missing just one league match through suspension, and spent most of the campaign as club captain due to injuries to Rhys James and Ben Chilwell. Gallagher had one year left on his Chelsea contract and new manager Enzo Marska recently stated that he had been offered a new contract. He made his England debut in 2021, has 18 caps and made five appearances at Euro 2024 where England reached the final losing 2-1 to Spain. 
Atletico have spent around 200 million euros following deals for Spain defender Robin Lee Norman and Norway striker Alexander Solo. After a disappointing 2 all draw at Villarreal to start the La Liga season on Monday, Atletico host last year's surprise packages Girona later on Sunday. Meanwhile, the Premier League club Chelsea have announced signing forward Jao Felix from Atletico Madrid on a seven-year deal. Financial details were not disclosed, but the English media reported that Chelsea paid around £46 million to secure the 24-year-old return to Stamford Bridge. Felix impressed during his six-month loan spell at Chelsea in the 2022-2023 season, scoring four goals in 20 appearances. He spent the last campaign on loan at Barcelona, scoring 10 goals in 44 games. Atletico signed Felix from Benfica in 2019 for a club record fee of 126 million euros. He scored 34 goals in 131 matches and helped them win the La Liga title in 2021. Felix in a statement expressed eagerness, happiness to return to Chelsea and meet familiar faces from the last time he was there. Chelsea plays Swiss side Servette in the Europa Conference League playoff stage later today before visiting Wolverhampton Wanderers in the Premier League on Sunday. Germany goalkeeper Manuel Neuer announced his retirement from internationals on Wednesday after playing 134 times for his country since the year 2009. The 38-year-old Bayern Munich player won the Golden Glove when Germany won the World Cup in 2014. Neuer wrote on Instagram marking the end of his career in the German national football team. He said he came to the decision that now is exactly the right time to end his chapter in the national team. Germany's National Soccer Federation, DFB, said Neuer was one of the greatest goalkeepers of all time. The organisation, in a statement, thanked him for his unique, outstanding successes and especially for his camaraderie, dedication and inspiration for fellow players and millions of fans and footballers around the world. Neuer retirement came two days after Germany midfielder Ilke Gundogan also retired from international football. Neuer's club Bayern, with whom he has won 11 Bundesliga, two Champions League and two club World Cup titles, begin their league campaign at Wolfsburg on Sunday. Pierre-Emerick Aboumayang and Nacho Fernandez are eager to start the new challenge in the Saudi Pro League with the newly promoted Al Qatsia. The former Arsenal, Barcelona and Borussia Dortmund journeyman and ex-Real Madrid stalwart are the headline names in Al Qatsia leads of incoming transfers. To everybody here and try to the 2024-2025 Saudi Pro League season gets underway later today when Al Tawun play host to Al Fiha. Al Qatsia, meanwhile, begin the campaign on Friday at home to Al Fateh in Khobar. Yeah, I think for me, uh, I've done everything in uh, in Europe. Uh, I've been uh, all around the uh, all around the, the world <laughs> with uh, with few teams, and I think it was time for me to uh, to try something different. And I think uh, this is a really good project because I can bring my experience to to, to the young players and to to everybody here and try to make the uh, make the team. Uh, better and uh, we will try to grow uh, as a group as a family and this is what I liked the most uh, when we talked about the project. Eh, yo desde hacía mucho tiempo ya eh, sentía la necesidad de que necesitaba probar una nueva experiencia eh, lo hablé con mi club de hacía varios meses y bueno cuando acabó la temporada pues ya lo solucionamos es verdad que también pilló la Eurocopa con, con la selección de por medio pero Pero como te digo, eh, no fue una, una decisión fácil porque salir del club de mi vida eh, eh, ha sido muy difícil, pero sí que lo tenía muy meditado y muy pensado y, y necesitaba ese cambio, ese cambio radical. Defending United States Open champion Coco Golf trained in New York as she looks to shake off a string of surprising defeats ahead of the final Grand Slam of the year. The American is one of the favourites at Flushing Meadows, but will have to improve her consistency if she is to make another run to the title. Gao suffered a big blow to her preparations for the 26 August to 8 September US Open when she lost her first match at the Cincinnati Open last week 
the latest in a run of tour-level losses to unfancied players going back to the French Open in June. Italian Jasmine Pollini will be hoping to continue her breakthrough year, which has catapulted her to number five in the world. The 28-year-old made the final of the French Open and Wimbledon and took home goal in the women's doubles at the Olympic with Sarah Irani. Gauff, representing the United States, also had lost 6-7, 2-6 to Croatia's Donna Vikic in the Olympic Women's Single Tournament, but the match was overshadowed by a controversial line call decision in the second set as Gauff was trying to stage a comeback. Former champions Daniel Medvedev and Naomi Osaka also trained earlier on Tuesday. Czech rider Pavel Bitner beat Wout van Ert in a photo finish at the end of Stage 5 of the Vuelta a Espana on Wednesday. Van Ert looked set to claim his second stage of this year's race in a fast, in a fast finish in Seville, but the 21-year-old Bitner edged out the Belgian on the line. It was Bidner's first career win at a Grand Tour. Van Ert retained the points green jersey, although will rue a missed opportunity. Australia's Caden Grooves finished in third place. Primark Rolik retained the overall lead after finishing safely in the peloton. Vennert launched his attack early and seemed to have done enough but misjudged his lunge to the line and Pitner took advantage to win by the narrowest of margins. Oh, it's uh, unbelievable. I mean, only a few weeks ago, a few days ago, I got my first pro win. So, uh, yeah, to get uh, the win at my first world, I, it's, it's really, I, I still don't believe it. <laughs> there was one casualty in the run in as Portugal Rui Costa was involved in a crash and was forced to abandon the race. The Vuelta returns to the mountains today with race favourite Rolik holding an eight-second lead over UAE team members rider Joa Almeida. That wraps up today's edition of World Today. In our top story, Thailand reports suspected first in pox case. Join us again tonight at 8.30 p.m. on Salur and Brita RTM and TV1 for more news updates. You can also stream us online through RTM Clicks app. Till then, I'm Saeed Samshidin, Malaysia Madani, Jiwa Merdeka. Goodbye for now.